Hi, I'm Megan, and today I'm going to show you how to play Dinosaur World. I'm going to go over the multiplayer rules and the solo rules. This game is for 1 to 4 players, plays in 60 to 120 minutes, and it's for ages 13 and up. So as you can see, I already have it mostly set up, and that is because this game is a lot to set up. Um, so I'm just speeding up the time, and I'm going to go over what I did to set it up, and then I'll finish setting it up. So you're gonna place the three central island boards in the middle of the table so all players can reach it. Then you're gonna give each player a DNA storage board. Um, one of these like park boards, I'm not sure what they're called. They both, the DNA storage and this board all have um, a different colored back. So you wanna choose your player color. Place um, the victory point board in the center of the table. Then you have a lot of components that um, I just place in some Tupperware containers because you're probably gonna want something to put them in because there's a lot of little components. Um, so I have the death tokens here, the money. This is the deluxe or the Kickstarter version. So I have metal coins, um, the meeples, your um, boredom tokens, three dice, and all three different types of dinosaurs. Then you're gonna give each player in their player color a jeeple, that's what they're called, a jeeple. And there are four colors, blue, red, yellow, and green. You're gonna give each player five of these arrows and place three of them on these spaces here where it says three, four, and five. And it has the little arrow symbol on there as well so you know to put the arrows there and give each player five of these in their player color and I'm gonna set up kind of like a two-player game but I'm only gonna show you the setup for one player just because it takes up a lot of space and then give each player all of their cubes in their color and you're gonna place them here on their DNA storage board you're gonna place it shows, here let me show you, this darker colored section is where you're going to place the cubes. So for red, blue, and yellow, you're going to place it on the second space. And for teal, purple, and orange, it'll go on the one space. Then you're going to place one cube on the zero of this red track zero on the yellow track and the very bottom on the purple track and the last cube goes here on the turn order space so you're going to determine the turn order and then whoever is first you go on the one space whoever is second goes on the second space and so on oh and then there's two more cubes it goes on the zero of the excitement level and zero of the victory points Give each player a reference guide. There's two of them. Both of them are double-sided. Um, I will note that there are some misprints on these cards, some misinformation, so it may not be that useful to have them. Just keep that in mind. I think somebody on BGG made their own reference cards that fixes the mistakes, but yeah. And then you're gonna need one of, of each of these for all players. And I just keep mine over here when I'm playing solo. But when I'm playing with other people, I usually keep them in my supply over there. You're gonna need these worker database cards and shuffle those up and then put them off to the side somewhere. You're gonna need these four buildings, security, roller coaster, restaurant, and merchandise shop. And you're gonna need one of all four for each player. So in a solo game, you only need one. In a two player game, you'll have two of each and so on. Place this pink cube on the one space of the round tracker. You're also gonna give each player three of these objective tokens. It has the little vehicle on the back. Then you're gonna take these objective cards, separate them by pile, A, B, and C. And you're gonna take one from each. You're gonna shuffle them. I'm not gonna shuffle, but you're gonna shuffle these. 
and take one A, one B, and one C. And you can put the rest in the box. Put these somewhere uh, where people can reach. Um, like I said, this game's a table hog, so most likely you're not going to be able to reach everything. Just, I don't know, put things in a good in a good spot. This is not where I would keep them um, in a two-player game. I'd probably have them above the boards, but since that's a little bit off camera, I'm going to leave them here for now. These are the objectives of the game that you're trying to complete to get victory points. Place your jeeple on your park entrance. Oh, I should mention give each player a park entrance tile. On one side it's park entrance, on the other side it's the welcome center. You want it on the park entrance and it has to go in this middle space. Then you're going to shuffle the stack of the dino paddock tiles and deal one face up on each of these three spaces. And then you're going to separate these stacks here. There's A, B, and C. So you want C on the bottom. You're gonna shuffle each stack individually. So shuffle the C's, shuffle the B's, and then shuffle the A's. And put the C's on the bottom, then the B's, and then the A's. And then taking from the A pile, you're gonna put, put out four following the arrows. So you put it in this spot first, then there, and finally there. And then you have this bag here that you're gonna place the dice in. Then you're going to determine the um, first player. And if you go by the rule book, the first player is the player who most recently trained a raptor to respond to hand signals. So yeah. Or you can just um, decide randomly or roll a dice to determine who goes first. It's up to you. And then give that player the first player marker. And then these tokens here, you can just place them um, near the cards or keep them in your personal supply somewhere. Each player then needs to choose between these five tokens, which bonus they wanna start the game with. So you got two money, two basic DNA, a meeple, one advanced DNA, or one security. So you're gonna choose which one you wanna start with. Normally people start with either the money, the meeple, or the security. We'll choose the money. And then based off a of turn order determines how much money you start with. The first player gets eight coins, the second player gets nine, third 10, and fourth gets 11. So for first player, that's them, they get eight, and they chose their starting bonus to be two extra coins. So they're actually gonna start with 10. And finally, I believe the last thing to do is to draft tiles. So you're going to draw from the A stack and from the dino paddock tiles, one tile per player plus one additional. So in a two player game, we're gonna put out three tiles from the A stack and three dino paddocks. And then each player is gonna take turns choosing one. So you start with the first player. The first player is gonna choose a tile. They can choose either a dino paddock or they can choose a special building. That's what these tiles are called. So they choose one and then they have to place it somewhere along the four edges of the park entrance. So I could place it there. Then the second player will choose. They may choose the dinosaur first. And then starting with the last player, so after everyone has chosen one tile, you go in reverse turn order. So in this case, the second player is now gonna choose um, one of the special buildings because they've already chosen a dinosaur tile. And then I chose a special building, so I now choose a dinosaur tile. And then these get um, out of the game. Not out of the game, but in a discard pile. Which in a two player game, you most likely will not shuffle the special buildings. Um, you may shuffle the dino paddocks. 
it's possible. It depends how many dino pedics you guys are purchasing. In the rule book, there's also a beginner variant for drafting tiles. So if it's your first game playing, it has recommendations of what tiles to put out and um, you pair them together with, um, you pair a specific special building with a specific dino paddock tile. And I believe that is everything for setup for a two player game. Now I'm gonna briefly go over the differences for setup for solo. So in the solo game, you set up um, your player board and area as normal, um, and you draft tiles as normal, but you don't use these three objective cards. Instead, you have these AI cards. Now these AI cards um, have two um, purposes. So you're gonna draw eight of them. You wanna look at this side of the card. So as you can see, they're double-sided, but you wanna look at the objective side. So you're gonna lay out eight cards, and then you're going to choose which cards you wanna keep. So what objectives do you want to work towards in your solo game? Um, you can get rid of up to three of them, so you have to keep at least five. So I may choose to get rid of these three here. Uh, actually, you know what, let's get rid of those three. Then you're gonna shuffle the ones you discarded and put them back, shuffle them back into the deck. And then place these objective tiles somewhere nearby. I usually place them below the board there. And then you want this deck that you're gonna use throughout the game. And then the last thing for setting up for solo is these specialist cards. So you either choose two or you shuffle and at random you deal two. And you have these abilities to use during the game. And then since you're the first player, because you're the only player, um, you take eight coins for your starting money. And this solo is kind of a beat your own score, but you have objectives to complete as well. You don't lose the game if you don't complete all the objectives but you do lose a lot of points if you don't complete the objectives. Um, and that is the only setup for Solo. So now I'm gonna put Solo away for now so I can go over the, the rules for multiplayer and then I'll come back to Solo. I'm gonna go ahead and leave these Solo cards set up right here, but just ignore those for the multiplayer rules. And let's put these objectives back out. So this game is played in five rounds. You can optionally play an additional round and every round is divided up into phases. So you're gonna hire workers first, which means you're gonna get meeples because this is a worker placement game. So you need those meeples to put out onto the different tiles and the different boards in order to do those actions. So you're gonna draw from the worker database cards, one card for the number of players. So in a two player game two, plus one additional. So three cards in a two player game. Then starting in turn order, the first player is going to choose which card they want. And these are the workers that you get for that round. You always get nine workers and it's always going to have four white workers and then five colored workers. The colors matter because um, different colors are used for different actions. So we'll choose, uh, doesn't matter, we'll choose that one and then say they choose one, and then those get discarded. So then you're gonna take from the meeple supply the correct amount and color of workers that is shown on your card. And then you can discard that card. So those are my workers to work with. Next, you're gonna um, put out some dice. For the dice, you're gonna draw out a number of dice equal to the number of players plus two and roll them and place them right here on this space of the board. Next is the public action phase. During the public action phase, you are buying dino paddocks, special buildings, attractions, and you're gathering DNA. That's all your actions that you're able to do during the public actions phase. For gathering dice or gathering DNA, you spend a number of workers 
um, any number of workers that you want to spend. If I spend one, I get one red DNA. And I can spend any color dice to, to do that. If I spend two workers, you times it. So I get two times one, so I get two red DNA. And if I spend three or four, you times it. And then put those back in the supply. If I had a blue worker and I spend a blue worker on a dice, I get that red DNA, but I also get, because I spent a blue worker, I get one additional DNA of my choice. And it could be any type of DNA, but only one per blue worker you spend. So for every blue worker you spend, it's one additional DNA of your choice. Then you have the dinosaur paddocks that you can buy. Now, both the paddocks and the special buildings all have a cost up here in the top left corner. Here you go. It's got the name of the dinosaur, the um, amount of DNA that you have to spend to make this dinosaur, as well as um, this stuff here, which I'll go over later. So to get a dinosaur paddock, you either have to spend two workers and pay the cost of the building, of the paddock, or you can spend one green worker and the cost of the paddock. So if you have green workers, it makes the paddocks cheaper in terms of your workers. For the special buildings, you, you have to spend any color worker, just one worker, any color, it doesn't matter, and pay the cost of the building. So it has reminders on the Central Island boards of what it costs to buy those types of buildings. And then for the attractions, it only costs you the cost of the tile. You don't have to pay any workers to take from this board. When you take a tile, you immediately place it in your park. When taking dino paddocks, there is one rule. And that rule is that they cannot be touching other dino paddocks. So I can't place it here or there or anywhere touching this paddock. I'd have to place it over here or down here. So we'll place it up there. You only do one action and then it's the next player's turn. So I bought a, a dino paddock. We slide these up following the arrows, put out a new one, and then it's the next player's turn. So on my next turn, maybe I'll buy one of these, spend any color worker. Usually you wanna spend your white workers um, if the cost is any color because the white workers don't have any special abilities. So say I buy this one here, and this tile has this pink and lightning bolt symbol there. That means I immediately get one victory point. And then place that in your park somewhere. Then again, you would slide these down following the arrows and put out a new one. And then say on my next turn, I get some DNA. I spend two white workers because I don't have any blues. And I get the blue DNA. So I get two blue DNA and I just go up on my board over here and then throw that back in the bag. And that is how all of the public actions work. So after everyone has passed, so um, if you pass and the other players are still taking their turns, you just have to wait until they're done. And then once everyone has passed, everyone is gonna go on to their private actions. Now your private actions is limited to what is on this board. So you got DNA refinement, VC funding, security, Jeeple garage, and make dinosaurs. So to make dinosaurs, it costs you any color worker, and you can make up to three dinosaurs, and you can make any type of dinosaur. To make a dinosaur, you have to spend DNA. So to make this dinosaur, which I'm not gonna try and pronounce that, um, it costs me a yellow, a red, and a purple DNA. Additionally, um, you're gonna place dinosaurs in these um, grayed out sections, and so this fir first section doesn't show any DNA, so I don't have to spend any extra DNA to make it. But once I go and make a second dinosaur of this type, I have to spend a yellow, red, purple, and a blue. So yellow, red, and purple, and just move those down. And then you immediately gain um, threat 
and victory points. So I immediately gain one victory point and then one threat. The red dots are your threat. So I go up one on the threat tracker here and then I get one victory point. Then you're gonna get that dinosaur out of here. And the back of the rule book shows what um, the different dinosaurs are if you wanna be specific on which ones you grab. I believe only the Kickstarter edition has the printed dinosaur image. Um, I believe it's just the shape and it's all green in the retail edition. And that's it for making dinosaurs. You can make up to three of them by placing one worker on each of these spots. Then for the Jeeple Garage, you can do that also up to three times by spending any color worker. But if you spend a purple worker, you get a coin. Basically, if you spend a purple worker, you get a $1 discount. So I place a purple worker on that spot and you go up on the Jeeple track here. So you go up one space, paying the cost of that section. So as you can see, there's different sections here that show a cost. So I was here and I went up, I went up one space into this section, which cost me $1. Because I used a purple worker, I get a $1 discount. So that first um, movement is free. To go up another time, it's gonna cost me two, but if I use a purple worker, I get a $1 discount, so it'll only cost me one. And then if I went up again, again, it's gonna cost me two, or if I spend a purple worker, it'll cost me one. If I go up to this space here, I then get this arrow and I get to choose another bonus, a Jeeple bonus. So I get that arrow and I'll put it in my supply. And then these are your Jeeple bonuses to choose from. Well, including the one you started with. So I may choose security as my next one and then I go up, immediately gain that bonus. So I immediately go up one on that security. And then for your security, um, you can also do that three times. It costs you any color worker. But again, if you use a yellow worker, you get a $1 discount. The security track works the same as the Jeeple track. You're paying the cost of the section that you're moving your cube into. So that'll cost me one coin. Since I have a yellow worker, I get a $1 discount, so it's free. VC funding. You can also do three times. It again, is any color worker, but if you spend a green worker, you get an additional coin. So VC funding is you place a worker and you get that listed amount of coins. So I get three coins for the first worker I place. For the second worker I place, I would get two and then one. But if I spend a green worker, I get one additional coin. And then for DNA refinement, I don't know why I keep putting this down because I just keep picking it back up again. But for DNA refinement, you can do that three times and it's any color worker, but if you spend a blue worker, it works the same way as the dice do. If you spend a blue worker, you get one additional basic DNA of your choice. So only a basic DNA, not an advanced. And the way this works is um, you choose one of these three actions. If I choose the top one, I can spend a red and a blue DNA so I can go down on my red and my blue in order to gain a purple DNA. Or I can spend a purple DNA in order to get a red and a blue. And the same works for the other two. And that is all of the private actions. So everyone is going to do that simultaneously but you have to wait um, until everyone is done before you move on to the next phase. So the next phase is the Jeeple tour, which is also simultaneously. During the Jeeple tour, you're going to move your Jeeple to the different tiles and activate them and collect what is called excitement 
which um, gives you income every round. To go to the special buildings, it's always going to cost you a worker. Usually it's a specific color worker. So as you can see, this one requires purple, green, green, and blue. So unfortunately, all I'm left with is purple and white. And my buildings require yellow and green. So I may have wanted to plan better in order to um, visit those tiles. But I can visit the dino paddocks if I have dinosaurs there. So let's say I've also made a Spinosaurus, which I believe is that one. You're going to take your arrows, and this is how many tiles um, that you can visit. So I have three arrows, so I can visit three tiles. You're going to place the arrow on the tile that you are leaving. So your first arrow is going to be placed on the park entrance. And I'm going to go to the Spinosaurus tile. Then you're going to gain excitement. This is the excitement you get. I have one dinosaur there, so I get three excitement. If I had two dinosaurs there, I would get an I would get six excitement. But right now I only have one, so I'm gonna get three excitement. So we're gonna increase that over here. Then you're going to increase the boredom, this little hashtag symbol or pound symbol, if that's what you call it. And you're gonna take from your boredom pile here, and I'm gonna take a one because I didn't have one there to start with. So I take one boredom, and basically, you're gonna keep increasing your boredoms throughout the game. Every time you visit that tile, you increase the boredom. Basically, the people that you are taking on the tour get bored of visiting the same attraction every time. Now your boredom, decreases the amount of excitement that you get. So, the next time I visit this tile, I get three excitement minus my boredom. So three minus one, I would get two excitement instead of three. After you increase your boredom, for the dino paddocks only, you roll a danger dice. If it's a um, large carnivore, the red tile, you have to roll the red dice nothing happened. But if I were to roll one of these symbols, you get a death token. So somebody died in your park while they were visiting that tile, that paddock. So take from the supply and I get a death token, has a one on one side and the death symbol on the other side. Visiting the large carnivores are more dangerous than visiting the other two. And then obviously the next dangerous one is visiting the small carnivores and then the herbivores. Then I go on to my next tile. So I place my arrow on the tile I'm leaving. I go to this tile, but I don't have a worker to activate that tile. So I'm simply passing through, but I still have to spend an arrow to do that. And then I go to this tile, visit this one. I get one excitement. Minus boredom, but right now I don't have any boredom on that tile. So I place a one. Then I gotta roll the purple dice. Oh, two deaths. Deaths are obviously bad. They're gonna possibly be minus points at the end of the game. And then say I did have, let's backtrack a minute. Say I did have the worker for this tile. I put the worker there. Then I gain or spend excitement. Um, basically, if your boredom costs more, if your boredom is more than your excitement, you have to decrease your excitement in order to visit that tile. So I get three excitement, then I place a boredom token, and then you do what it says. So this one just says draw and roll five DNA dice, choose a DNA symbol and get plus one money per dice with one or more of that symbol. So you just do what it says on that action. Um, you have this tile and a couple other of these tiles in the special building stack. And this one is basically you put your worker there, so a green worker. You get two excitement minus your boredom. Then you roll that color dice. And then you get four victory points. And then you increase your threat by one. 
but that's only if you have put a um, dinosaur on this tile. So first you have to um, make this dinosaur in order to visit that tile. You cannot visit a dino paddock if it doesn't have a dinosaur there. And I believe that is everything for the Jeeple tour. Then you go to income and cleanup. And this is where um, this stuff comes in handy. Um, I'm not sure if everything is correct on this or not, but I believe it is. I always follow the income and cleanup section because that seems to be correct. So I use this to remind myself of what to do during the income and cleanup. So first you're going to reset your Jeeple and gain your Jeeple bonuses. So you put your Jeeple back on the park entrance and take all of your arrows off and put them back to your supply. Then you're going to gain your Jeeple bonuses. So the bonus is over here. So I get one security and two money. Then you're going to gain income from your excitement level. So I'm at level six, which is five money. And then you're going to reset your excitement to zero. So it's always going to reset at the end of the round. So basically, um, if you want more money, you have to visit more tiles, which means you need more of these arrows, which means you got to go up on the Jeeple track. So yeah, then you're going to return all the workers on your um, private board here and on all the tiles here back to the supply. If you have any left over, you just keep them for the next round. Then you're going to evaluate your threat. You get one death token per threat that exceeds your security. So right now, I'm good. My security exceeds my threat. So I wouldn't get any deaths. But if my threat is above my security, I get one death token um, for every space that it is above my security. So in that case, I would get one death. Then you're going to return the DNA dice to the bag. You're going to discard dino paddocks and discard special buildings. So it shows on the board here these little trash can symbols. So in a three or four player game, you're going to discard these two and move everything down following the arrows. But in a two player game, you're also going to discard this tile. And then slide that one down and put out new ones. And same for the dino paddocks, you're going to discard these two here. And that's for every player count, um, even two player. And this board always stays the same. Then you're going to cert, um, set turn order from the least to the most victory points. Um, so whoever has the least amount of victory points goes first in turn order. So you're going to rearrange these according to um, turn order. So you're not going in a clockwise direction for turn order. It's determined by the victory points. And then you're going to advance the round marker to round two. Um, it has these, these green spaces on the round um, track. And that's just basically you put it there when you're doing income and cleanup. And then you move it down at the um, end of income and cleanup. And then when you get to this yellow space here, you're going to flip your park entrance to the welcome center. And you're going to move it um, three spaces away. If you don't, normally you'd have more tiles than this. But if you don't, let's first say that I do. So if it was, it's here, you got to move it three spaces away. One, two, three. Put your jeeple on it and this is now where you're going to start from so keep that in mind when you're placing tiles out that um halfway through the game you're going to be starting from a different spot so that means the tiles that you place over here um it's going to be harder for you to visit in later rounds if you didn't have enough tiles to move it three spaces away take one of the tiles from the discard pile and put it face down and then place your tile three spaces away. So you want to make sure that you get enough tiles to be able to move your welcome center three spaces away. Because otherwise you have this dead space that you always have to move through. And then that is it for income and cleanup. And then you just start the next round by hiring workers, 
and just go in this um, in these phases as it's listed here. So that is correct. Then at the end of the game, after the five rounds or six rounds, if you choose to make the game longer, you're going to get one victory point for every five coins you have in your supply. So the majority of your points comes during the game. It comes from these tiles. Um, if you buy tiles, some of them have victory points on them. It comes from mainly from making dinosaurs because each dinosaur you make gives you a different amount of victory points. The more dinosaurs you make of that type gives you more victory points as it um, as you make more. And then the other way, I think that's the only ways. Oh yes, the objectives. Sorry, I totally forgot about those. Once you've completed one of these objectives, it doesn't matter which one, you're going to take one of your tokens, your objective tokens, with the little jeeple on it, and you're going to place it on the first available spot. So first place for this one gets six victory points. It's whoever completes it first gets the higher victory points, and then second and third place, there is no fourth place for any of the objectives. And you can do that for all three of them but it's whoever gets it first. And then, um, then you're going to evaluate your death tokens. So everyone's gonna count up their death tokens and whoever has the least gets to get rid of all of their death tokens. And then everyone else is gonna get rid of the same amount of death tokens that the least, that the person who had the least got rid of. So if I had the least and I have four, I get rid of all four, every other player gets to get rid of Four as well and then whatever they have left over is minus victory points so depending on how many deaths you have left it's minus those amount of victory points you get a lot of death if you keep visiting um, like your large carnivore tiles and you keep rolling the death tokens and if you your threat um, is constantly above your security you're going to constantly get death tokens. So you can rack up death tokens pretty easily in this game. And 10 death tokens at the end of the game is minus 15 points. That's a lot of points. So that is everything for Dinosaur World. I believe I've gone over everything. Um, at the back of the rule book on page 22, it's got um, frequently overlooked rules that you can look at. Just some extra clarification of some of the rules if anything didn't make sense. Now I'm gonna go over the solo rules, so I'm gonna clean up a little bit and set solo back up, and then I'll explain how that works. So remember in solo, you don't use these objective cards, so you also don't use these objective tokens. Okay, I've got it all set up for solo. I've got my objectives down here. Remember you choose um, you deal out eight and you have to keep at least five. I've only kept five, but you can choose to keep all eight. It just makes the game harder. Then you have your two specialist cards and then the rest of the AI deck. And then for solo, when you're drafting tiles at the beginning of the game, you only deal out two special buildings and two dino paddocks. And then you choose one of each. And then the rest of the setup is set up um, normally for a two player game. Um, minus putting out, you don't put out a board and stuff for the second player. Now the way the objectives work, this is your objective and then you get two victory points when you complete this objective. If you complete this objective by the set round that it says, so in this case by round three, you get six additional points. So if you complete this on round three or before round three, you get eight points. So that's how all of the um, objectives work. They all have a different round number on them. So at the start of each round, you're gonna flip over the top card. At the beginning of the game, you're going to ignore this yellow um, arrow. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna ignore all arrows, really, because you don't have any dinosaurs yet. So I'll come back to that. This is the number of dice that you put out that round, so three. This is the number of special buildings you're going to discard at the end of the round. 
and the number of dino paddocks you're going to discard at the end of the round. Now the arrows mean, the yellow arrow, well, let's do the orange arrow first. The orange arrow means that your dinosaurs are going to escape. And it shows in which direction that that dinosaur is going to escape to. So in this case, it's going to escape upwards that way. There's nowhere for it to go for these two tiles, so it's not going to escape. This one, however, is going to escape, so you're going to move it there. Now, if you're like me and you use the correct, if you have the Kickstarter edition and you use the correct dinosaur for the correct paddock, you don't need to track um, where that dinosaur belongs. But if you have the retail edition and they don't have the printed image, or if you're not using the correct dinosaur for the correct paddock, then you want to track with a different player color cube and place that cube where that escaped dinosaur was. So you remember where to return it when you finally do return it to its paddock. So that dinosaur escapes there. Now, the next time I draw a card, at the start of the round, that escaped dinosaur and all other escaped dinosaurs are going to move. So in this case, it's moving down. And then you set up the dice and everything like normal and you play out the round as normal. The only difference is moving the escaped dinosaurs. Now your specialist cards, oh, I should go over. To return an escaped dinosaur to its paddock, you have to spend any color worker. I usually place the worker on the dinosaur to remind myself to return it later. During your jeeple tour, when you land on that tile, you can spend a worker of any color to return that dinosaur to its paddock. You cannot activate a tile, so even if I had a yellow, I can't activate this tile until I return this escaped dinosaur. So if it's got an escaped dinosaur on it, you can't activate it. You have to return the dinosaur first. But if I were to spend a meeple and return that dinosaur, I can then activate this tile. You can, however, still activate the dino paddocks even if one of the dinosaurs in that paddock has escaped. So in this case, the dinosaur um, right now has escaped, but I'm at this paddock and I would still gain excitement equal to the level of how many dinosaurs I have, minus the boredom, and I'd start to roll the danger dice and gain any death. So you can still visit it and activate it. And then your specialist cards, and then during income and cleanup, before you start income and cleanup, you're going to check your objectives and see if you've completed any of them. And if you have, gain the victory points. If you've completed it um, by the certain round that it says, you gain those additional victory points. And then each specialist card does something different, but they require workers to activate them. So this one lets me return up to two escaped dinosaurs to their paddocks, and then I gain two, two excitement. So this costs me yellow workers. I put one yellow worker there and it lets me return up to two dinosaurs for free. I guess technically not for free because I'm spending one worker to activate that card, but I don't have to visit that tile to return them. And then this one, you spend any color worker to get two additional workers. So you spend one worker to get two workers of any color. So I can spend this purple. If I really needed blues, I can get those blues. You can use these specialist cards at any time during the game. So during the public action, the private action, the jeeple tour, at any time during the game, you can activate those cards. At the end of the game, if you haven't used these cards at all, meaning they have no workers on them, you get the victory points that's shown in the bottom right corner of the card. And that's pretty much it for solo rules and the differences for that. Um, for scoring, you're going to compare, oh, I did forget one thing, sorry. Um, at the end of every Jeeple tour, so before you start income and cleanup, you're gonna roll all three of the danger dice. You're going to give the AI player death tokens um, equal to what's shown minus one. So in this case, they wouldn't get any death. Sorry, my camera cut out there for a minute. So as I was saying, you give them death tokens equal to what's shown, minus one. So in this case, there's two, so they get one death token. 
and I always place them on the central board over here. You just want to keep them away from your supply so you don't get them mixed up. And then at the end of the game, like normal, you're going to compare your death tokens to theirs. Whoever has the least gets to get rid of all of them. So if they have the least, they get rid of all of theirs and I get rid of the same amount that they get rid of. And then for any leftover, you get minus points. And then for the rest of in um, for the rest of the end game scoring, any escaped dinosaurs are minus three points. So if you haven't returned them by the end of the game, it's minus three points per dinosaur that's escaped. And then it's minus ten points for every objective that you haven't completed. So for your first game, I would suggest only keeping five of the objective cards. And then, like I said, unused specialist cards are minus or not minus. You get points um, for any unused specialist cards, which is shown in the bottom right corner. And then on page 20, you can compare your score. You can compare your score to this chart here. And that's everything for solo rules and for um, multiplayer rules. I will be playing this solo coming up this week, probably. And then hopefully eventually I'll be able to play this um, and record a two player playthrough as this, of this as well. So that was Dinosaur World for multiplayer and solo. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful. I'll see you next time. Bye.